The third technology that I chose is an e online ecological lab. This website is an interactive lab that allows students to choose scenarios in nature and then run a simulation to see the potential outcome of their ecosystem based on the producers and the food web. It challenges students not only to learn how to model nature, but also how to read and understand the data they produce in these simulations. The objective is twofold. One is to help students understand the importance of balance in an ecosystem based on how species live together in harmony, while also teaching them how to produce and handle scientific data. To the two ISTE standards for using this technology are IST1C and 1D. So this is the Interactive Labs by Annenberg Lerner. <clears throat> the first thing we notice is that the lab provides an overview. Then it talks about the lesson. So in the lesson number one, it talks about the producers. Well, we know that the producers are the plant life, um, whether it's trees, grass, that's, those are all producers. So in this simulation, the first challenge is to develop a ecosystem where the three producers can live together in harmony. Then the second challenge is to look at the food web by adding different species at different times and paying attention to their, um, to their outcome. Each one of these has, uh, for your consideration, we're going to see here that when there's uh, you put two or three plants in the same area, they outcompete each other real quick. Um, and here we see that if you alter one species or make move one connection within the food web, you can drastically alter an ecosystem. So let's open the sim simulator and let's run this. So we're going to turn off the Turn them all off. Obviously here, if we run just one plant, you're going to immediately fill it in. It's going to immediately take over an entire ecosystem. So let's add two plants. And we're going to run it. And boom, it immediately takes over and out competes the other. So let's turn that one off and let's turn these two on and see what happens. We have a pine, we have a tree, and we have some plants. Once again, the plants have outcompeted the trees. And here it's almost instantaneous. There we go. Let's try that. And it's almost instantaneous. And if we run trees by themselves, once again. Okay, so we got the picture. Plants left to each other alone with nothing feeding on them will eventually one species of plant will outcompete the rest. So let's add a rabbit to this and let's have it eat plant A. And we're going to run this. See how now these other plant species can effectively thrive. So we're going to add a secondary plant. And we're going to say it eats plant A too and reset this and run it. Okay, so let's have it eat plant B and let's see what it does. Plant A almost completely got completely wiped out immediately. see here we go we got one feeding on one type one feeding on another we've got a fairly healthy ecosystem here so now let's add a predator we're gonna have meet the rabbits we're gonna reset this and we're gonna run with it as this predator goes through and eats the rabbits all of a sudden now plant a which was typically eaten by the rabbits is beginning to outcompete plant B in the trees, where pretty soon we don't have very many deer left, 
and we have fewer rabbits and we have a whole lot more green. So if we remove the deer, let's reset this and run it to where all we have is rabbits and wolves. Next thing you know, the competition gets fierce and the populations of the plants are allowed to be stabilized. We're going to add another animal here to eat plant A. Reset this and now let's watch. So the kids can play with this and they can see how by making these connections they can dramatically alter the ecosystem. And what's cool with this is each one of these provides a graph where it shows the increase or decrease in population.